Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, November 21st, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Now, we have talked about Intel's manageability engine in the past. Usually, researchers come up with vulnerabilities in this particular processor that's included in many of the newer Intel platforms. Now, today Intel released a bulletin with uh, fixes for a number of different vulnerabilities that apparently were found in Intel's own internal testing. Most of these vulnerabilities are privilege escalation vulnerabilities, but what this really means when it comes to the active management technology AMT or the manageability engine ME is that an attacker that gained admin access on your system is now able to run code due to these vulnerabilities using these active management technologies. The result is that this code really runs outside the operating system. This is essentially a separate small computer that's running next to the CPU. So your antivirus is pretty much uh, out of scope here. And also if you are rebuilding the system from scratch, you're likely not going to touch any code that the attacker stored in this subsystem. Intel did release a tool that allows you to detect if you are vulnerable. The tool applies to Windows and Linux and now OS X users. As long as you are running on Apple's hardware, you should be fine because it doesn't ship with the manageability engine. Now, Intel only released a detection tool. It did not release a patch for end users. That's something the manufacturer of your motherboard, of your computer has to do. Lenovo, for example, already released patches according to Intel. Haven't seen any patches from anybody else so far. However, the link that Intel has on its site to Lenovo's version of the advisory currently goes nowhere. So no exa not exactly sure where to find the Lenovo patch that apparently exists. And talking about processor and hardware flaws, there is now a tool that allows you to chase down these flaws yourself. The tool is called Sand Sifter. It was published to GitHub and essentially it's a fuzzer for x86 instructions. So it does try random more or less byte combinations and essentially sees what happens. This tool can be used and has already been used successfully in order to find, for example, hidden instruction, but it can also be used to find any bugs and vulnerabilities in current CPUs. Again, this only works for x86 CPUs, but should work for x86 CPUs from different manufacturers. And Android users who haven't updated to version Eight yet are susceptible to a vulnerability that would allow an attacker to capture the screen on the device or even make audio recordings without user interaction. The problem is the Media Projection API that was introduced in Android 5.0. This particular API does allow applications to capture its own screen, but due to a bug in the implementation, it's possible to confuse the operating system and as a result, the attacker is able to capture screens created by other applications. The vulnerability was originally disclosed to Google in January. The patch for Android 8.0 was released in August. So far, there's no word from Google as to when or if they will release a patch for older versions of Android. And then we got a probably not very severe, but certainly interesting vulnerability in BusyBox. BusyBox is a tool that comes with a lot of small Linux systems. And essentially, it's one binary that sort of combines a lot of shell and other tools in a very compact format. Now, one feature 
of BusyBox is that on its shell, and it uses a variant of the Ash shell, it does support auto completion. Now, the problem here comes up if you do have a malicious file name in the directory that uses control characters. Usually control characters are sanitized by the shell, but apparently that's not a case if auto completion is being used. So if you are like me, a lazy typer, and you do use the tab key in order to auto complete a file name, you may inadvertently trigger these escape sequences. Well, and if you had any issues connecting to the Storm Center or the Shield website on Monday morning, we had a database failure and uh, failed over to our secondary site. If you still see any problems, uh, please let us know in case one spot or so didn't fail over correctly. That's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.